himself run over. Going off like that, he will not. Come on, Ruth, love. Your dad wants to get off. Yeah, where are you going? Off to the cliffs to see my granddad. Where are you going to? You ask your mother and I'll ask mine. Mummy! 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 Mom! Can I go down to bay with Ruth? You can go anywhere you like if you build up with that racket. Have you been asked, Teddy? I will be in a minute. Oh, very well, then. Thanks, Mum. Oh, great love you're getting. Oh, Daddy. My dad says I can come to the cliffs with you, Mr. Harris. Did he? Right, jump in, then. Seems your Teddy's coming up to the cliffs with our Ruth. Very kind of you, John. Hey, hey, my ball, I forgot it. Here it is. Thanks, Mummy. Forget your head next. Now give our love to your granddad and tell him I'll be down when I've done the shopping. Be a good girl. I'll keep an eye on her, Mrs. Harris. Bye. Bye, love. See you after work. Bye bye, Daddy. up to your granddad. Oh, I'll run up with it now. No, it doesn't matter. You stay and enjoy yourself. I'll give you a shout when your dad comes. Okay, Mummy. Hello, son. Oh, Father. Where's Pat? She's down on the beach with the children. A lot of driftwood came in last night. They're getting some for me. Hey, that's my ball! Well, you can always swim for it. You swim! You kicked it in! She's afraid of the water. Go on, I dare you! Come on, Ruth. Teddy, honest, it doesn't matter. We'll take that boat there. Can we get it loose? We'll have a go. Climb that again. Thank you, Pat. I've got a nice fire going. It'll be warm for you when you come in for your tea. It's bleak for him living up here. Wish we could persuade him to stay with us. Oh, he'd never leave. He loves it up here. Ah, I know how he feels. Father, tell him to get a bolt out there, quick.
Give him to me. Get back to Ruth. We'll get as near as we can. If we don't go alongside, they'll tear us to pieces. Is all right. Packed him off home. The girl's parents here? Yes, they're waiting. What are they like? Young, nice. He's a maintenance engineer at the pit. Uh -huh. Good evening. I'm Dr. Brown. How is she? How's Ruth? I is she in danger? Please, tell us the truth. Her little girl is very ill. She has a hemoglobin reading of only 30%. What does that mean? It means that she has less than half the amount of blood she ought to have. I'm afraid she'd severed an artery. Ruth is well below the danger line, Mrs. Harris. What are you going to do? We're going to give her a blood transfusion straight away. Fortunately, she belongs to a common group. There should be no trouble in that direction. Once the new blood begins to work, she'll pick up. Be well on her way to recovery. You know what astonishing recuperative powers young children have? No. No what, Mr. Harris? She... She, she mustn't have a blood transfusion. Perhaps I didn't make myself clear. The child is dying. Yes, Mrs. Harris, dying. She needs red blood cells at once. The, the, the giving and taking of blood is against our religion. Religion? What's religion got to do with it? A transfusion will save her life. It, it will deny her everlasting life. A blood transfusion. It's against God's law. What law? There can't be any law that... Whatsoever man eateth any manner of blood, I will set my face against that soul. That's just a legend, man. Thousands of years old, but we're not living in the Dark Ages now. God's word is as true today as it was then. Mr. Wait here, please. He said he could save her. You must see the choice for her. I don't want it. You must. A, a, a momentary existence now, or, or the glory of eternal life with God. If we weaken Pat, we destroy her. I've got one of these religious cranks on my hands. Refuses to allow his child to have a blood transfusion. If she doesn't get it, she'll be dead in an hour. Can you come, please? Oh, I wish I'd left five minutes earlier. He's just examined your daughter. Would you listen to him, please? Mr. Harris, I know something about your faith, and I'm fully aware of the rule concerning transfusion, but you've got to think clearly now. Your daughter will die unless she receives immediate and proper attention. Dr. Brown just told us that. Oh, for heaven's sake, Harris. No. No. Are you going to be able to live with her death on your hands? She's in God's hands. How old is your daughter, Mrs. Harris? Eight. Have you any other children? No. Do you at least understand what is happening? Ruth is dying. Would you please try and make your husband see that the Bible is not law in every word? It is for us. My 
husband speaks for both of us. That's it then, Jim. The parents are agreed. We shall have to ask you to sign a declaration taking full responsibility for your decision. Yes. When will the crisis be? Crisis is now, Miss Harris. If you'll just sign here, it's a statement exonerating the hospital from any blame if the child dies. You should be in bed. You'll get pneumonia if you hang about much longer in those wet clothes. There's nothing you can do here. We'll let you know immediately if there's any change. May, may we see her? Yes, of course. Do it. Harris has signed the paper. You'll lay yourself open to a charge of assault. The hospital, too. I've got a call through to Marshall. He's the chief. If he'll risk the hospital, I'll risk the assault charge. I just want to be ready, that's all. Why doesn't he ring? Take it easy. Easy? The whole thing's are stupid, I could... Look, we're doctors, aren't we? We're supposed to make any decisions we think are right for a patient, aren't we? When it comes to a, an operation or... Transfusion to save a child's life. Do we make the decisions then? Do we do what we know is right? No, we don't. Because we have to have the consent of some crank or half-wit who happens to be the child's father. We're thankful it doesn't happen more often. That's a great comfort. It's happening now. This child. You'll call Dr. Brown. Leave me alone for ten minutes, you'd have a blood transfusion all right. Rules are not made for nothing, nurse. Especially in a hospital. She's so young. That's why her parents make the decisions. We're helpless. Oh, it's awful. Well, Marshall's on his way to a meeting in Newcastle. At last. He arrives in half an hour. His wife's getting in touch with him right away. Did you tell her? She'll leave a message for him to contact me as soon as he arrives. Half an hour. No, oh, too late. No. Not without Marshall's consent. Go home, Richard. Sorry. The child's my patient. The hospital's my responsibility. What are you talking about? I'm senior to you, Jim, and I'm telling you. We're going to wait for Marshall. No good looking at me like that. If there'd been the slightest sign of weakening in the father, I'd chance it. But there wasn't. Harris was adamant. Yeah. He was adamant. What's going to happen, Doctor? We're waiting for Mr. Marshall to call. How long do we wait? Just as long as she's alive, sister.
change your clothes. You'll be ill if you don't. Pat, listen to me. We're doing right. Look at me. In God's law, there's no compromise. You have to go the whole way or not at all. Ruth will be dead by morning. We, we, we don't know that. She's only eight. She's hardly lived. <laughs> Don't. Please don't. I can't help it. If, if, if you tried to sleep now. Sleep? You ought to be in bed. You're shivering. I'll come up soon. Pat, I promise you, she... Ruth's going to be all right. Transfusion, please give the transfusion now. dead. I saw her die. No. I saw Ruth die. Not too early. Well, they're all. I saw the lights on earlier. Aye. Morning, we won't John. come in, John, but we couldn't go another minute without saying thank you. Well, you know, you can't say thank you, really. It's not enough. Hmm. Well, you know what you did for Teddy. Saved his life. Yes, that's it. He's a bit down now, like, but the doctor says he'll be right as rain in a week. We've come to thank your husband, Pat. He's a brave man. How's Ruth, love? Ruth's dead. Dead. If you'll excuse us.
James. Saw you had such trouble trying to track me down last night. Sad business about that little girl, but you mustn't feel responsible. I couldn't have gone against the parents. I've asked for a post-mortem. Why? There'll be an inquest. Isn't that sufficient? No, sir. A post-mortem will show that she died from lack of blood, which I could have given her. I watched her die, knowing I could have saved her. Now, that shouldn't be hidden. Well, it's uh, a bit of tragedy, I agree, but... Uh... It was murder. He killed her. Oh, no, no, just a moment, James. You've lost your sense of proportion. I have second thoughts about this. I've had them all through last night. Plain superstition and bigotry killed that child. That's your opinion, and you're entitled to it. But people like Harris believe in the literal word of the Bible, and they're entitled to that. Entitled to what? Entitled to kill? Oh, be sensible. It's hardly killing. What is it, then? Their misfortune. They have their own beliefs. And it's no good having a set of beliefs if you're going to throw away the inconvenient ones. Beliefs? Insanities. Harris is a walking example for some other fanatic to go and do the same thing elsewhere. I'm not going to let him quietly bury her. Harris was within his rights to refuse a blood transfusion. There's nothing you can do. Aren't these people suffering enough? Perhaps if you'd a wife, you'd realize how Mrs. Harris must be feeling. Oh, I know how Mrs. Harris feels all right, in her heart. She feels exactly the same as I do. Sit down, John. I'll get you a drink. You look done in. Not just now, thanks. Pat, will you come outside for a moment? What do you want? It's about the funeral. What is it? It's going to be an inquest. Post mortem. Oh, my God, no. Why? Is it because of the accident in the sea, John? No, it, it's not that. It's because Ruth needed a blood transfusion and we refused to let her have one. Could Ruth have lived with a blood transfusion? The doctor said yes. She wanted him. What sort of people are they? What sort of religion is it that will take a child's life like that? Come inside, son. Tell me, what, what would you have done? I should have done what my faith required of me, what you did. But you never had to do such a thing, did you? You never had to say, there, there's my child, L let him die. God never put me to that test. But if he had... You, you would have let me die as... As I did, Ruth. 
I would have asked myself, why is this happening? What is God asking of me? Uh, and answered? That he wanted my child to grant it everlasting joy in his presence. I know how you feel. Ruth was my granddaughter. I loved her. I, I doubt myself, Father. I doubt myself for feeling as I do. What you did was right, John. If you had answered yes to that doctor, Ruth's life would have ended on this earth. We know now that life is only a preparation and that the best comes after. And you made sure that Ruth had the best. It don't sound so simple said like that. We've set ourselves a hard task to live by God's word and never deviate. My grandfather taught me the strength of our faith and I've taught it to you. And who have I to teach? Who? father have to say how good we were how right we were we followed the word the faith everything's in pieces pat i know that your heart's breaking so is mine we can only help each other like we helped ruth you saved teddy and left ruth in the sea how could you do that how could you ruth had a chance pat teddy was almost gone that wouldn't make any difference to me well, what sort of decision was it from me? I'll, I'll never get the sound of her cries out of my head. Never. I'm sorry, John. I shouldn't have said that. I didn't mean it. What's happening to us? Pat? No. There's something I must tell you. Last night I went back to the hospital. I know you did. I went back to ask them, beg them to give Ruth a transfusion. I got there too late and she died. Pat! I wanted Ruth to live. But if we, if we had gone back on our faith, she would have lost her eternal life. I don't believe that. And I realize now I never did believe it. Pat! I married you because I loved you. When you asked me to promise certain things, I promised them because you asked me. That's as far as my belief went, just as far as you. But I never really thought until last night. And last night I knew that living was here on this earth. Now, Ruth warm and breathing. Stop! That's what I did. I tried to save Ruth's earthly life. How do I know there's any other? I've only been your wife in love, John. Never in faith. Now that you know I don't really belong here, do I? in the sea. <laughs> if it had been a cat or a dog or a horse, they'd have been howling for his blood. Like you're doing. The coroner should have torn Harris in half, not acted like a wet nurse. 
passing the buck, Jim. This touch is religion, and that's dynamite. Ah, so it is. Maybe it's time someone got blown sky high. You sound as brutal as you're making Harris out to be. Maybe I am. It's not the man himself I'm after. It's the fact that he can, he can kill and be allowed to get away with it. That makes more sense. I feel so damned helpless. Come on, you've done everything you can. Forget it. It's finished. That kid gets better tomorrow. Richard, will you drive my car back to the hospital for me? I think I'll just walk it off. There's a Dr. Brown to see you, sir. Well, well. Sir? Show him in. Dr. Brown, sir. Come in, doctor. I shan't keep you a minute. Well, what can I do for you? You were at the inquest on Ruth Harris, weren't you? Uh, yes, I was. What's going to happen? Happen? I'm not sure I'm with you. As a result of the verdict. Oh, I see. Well, sit down, Doctor. Well, I've heard the evidence. The coroner's given his verdict and everyone will be satisfied, I'm sure. The coroner's verdict isn't final. Is that so? No. The police can take the matter further. Well, yes, that has been done. Well, first of all, the police have to disagree with the coroner's verdict. And even then, they don't move. They can't move, in fact, without a lot of evidence to support them. Harris was responsible for his child's death because he refused to let me give her treatment that would have saved her life. Now, I should have thought that was evidence enough. Ah. So I heard you say at the inquest. Are the police going to do anything more? Religion's a tricky business, Doctor. Very tricky. Everyone feels, nobody thinks. So you're not going to do anything? There's nothing I can do. I'll take further advice. That's your privilege, Doctor. As a private citizen. After two. Is it? She'll be buried today, then. This won't do, Pat. I wish I were dead, too. That's cowardly talk, and I won't have it. You should be with John. It must be awful for him all alone in that house with, with Ruth's... No. You love him, Pat. Do I? Can I go back and pretend? Pretend all over again that I believe like he does. Maybe give him another child. You're worn out. Come on to bed, love. No, I'll just sit here for a bit. I couldn't sleep anyway. Well, don't get cold then.
Was? Call yourself a father. They should put you away. That's what they should do. You won't get away with it, though. You don't deserve to have a child. Leave him alone. He's got nothing to do with you. Get out. It's the only service there is. Come home, John. Please come home. My name's Clyde. I edit The Citizen. Ah, that's funny. I've made up my mind to come around and see you. I just read your article. You took a strong line. Glad someone here had the guts to speak out. I'd like to help if I can. What's your next step? What gave you the idea I was going to take one? I watched your face at the inquest. All right, I won't deny it. I want to find out the exact legal position. There must be a right of appeal somewhere. Who's the good solicitor? Art Jacobs in Durham. He's your boy. I've known him for years. We play golf together. Do you want to meet him? Yes. Yes. Those are the full facts? Yes. Well, there's no doubt that you can lay information before the magistrates. If they think there's enough evidence to put Harris on trial, they'll commit him. He'll go to Assizes on a charge of manslaughter. Not murder? No, no premeditation, no intent to kill. You'll have to be satisfied with manslaughter. What do I do next? You find yourself a solicitor. Well, that's you. No. I'm completely out of sympathy with you, Brown. Why, for heaven's sake? Because I think he's cutting across the most private things in a man's life. What right have you to criticize Harris's beliefs? Because the child's dead. Dead? To you, not to him. <laughs> Superstitious dogma. I believe you're a Catholic, Clyde? Yeah. Well, there's another decision we might have to make one day, Doctor whether to save a mother's life or that of her unborn child. Clyde's church would sacrifice the mother's life. Clyde would sacrifice the living mother for the unborn child. Harris would sacrifice the living child for its life to come, its everlasting life. Look, I'm a doctor. It's my business to save life here. That's simple enough, isn't it? Then you mean to go through with this? Yes, I do. Well, I'm not taking it on. I'm a Jew. The thing smacks of persecution to me. Persecution, my foot. We've got to make an example of Harris to stop this happening again. <laughs> you and your crusades. Last month it was fox hunting. Now look. Uh, all right. I know, you're right from the heart. Well, if you won't take it on, you won't. You can go and see Mapleton. Yes, Mapleton's your man, Doctor. Cold-blooded fish. And he knows law. Come in, Clyde. I think we need a drink. You have it. I need some exercise. Bye, Doctor. Private action on a charge such as manslaughter is unusual, of course. So the right of any man to bring a charge against another is as old as the law itself. It was right back to the days when the village elders held court under the oak tree. Yes, well, our authority would be Regina versus Senior, 1899. In many ways parallel, the case turned upon the interpretation of the words willfully neglects. The father refused medical care and the child died. He killed her then. Well, at any rate, they got him on a manslaughter charge. What happened? The jury found him guilty. Yes, well, we can get Harris under Section 1 of the Prevention of Cruelty to Children Act, 1894. Renamed the Children and Young Persons Act in 1933, but basically still the same. Will it take long? No, no, this is brief, simple. Facts as plain as day. All contained in your statement, corroborated by affidavits from the other doctor and the sister. Say nothing of the declaration that Harris signed, taking full responsibility for his action. 
No, in my opinion, I don't see how the magistrates will be able to say there's no case to answer. Well, Superintendent Finlay didn't take that view. Oh, well, he's a cautious man. Anyway, the police have to think past the magistrates, Doctor, right after the judge and jury. But don't ask me for an opinion there. All right, Mr. Mapleton. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. May I see Mr. Reynolds? Vickers round a youth hall. They repaired the leak last week. Now they're doing the wall. Thank you. Mr. Reynolds? Pat. Patricia Harris. Sorry to interrupt you while you're working. Oh, that's all right. This job will go on for months. Why? I haven't seen you since... Since I married into another church. It isn't the church that matters. Do you know what's happened? Yes, I know. Your husband, does he approve of your coming to see me? He doesn't know. We're not together anymore. Oh, that's sad. Did you expect me to stay with him? I'm old-fashioned. I believe in till death us do part. Why did you leave him? I wasn't ever really with him. Not the way he thought I was. Mr. Reynolds, is everything we read in the Bible true? Did God want Ruth to die? Your husband thinks so. He believes his God called Ruth unto himself. Why do you say his God? It's the same God for us all, isn't it? No, it isn't. What's the difference, then? We all read the same book. The difference is very simple. We pick and choose from the same book, as you say. One man reads God is merciful, one man reads God is wise, one man reads God is the law. We all treat the church like a supermarket. <laughs> Go in and buy half a pound of the belief that pleases us best. You did that, didn't you, Pat? You chose a belief that pleased you because it pleased your husband. Yes, I did. That's exactly what I did. Well, your husband didn't. His faith came from within. His faith killed Ruth. I don't believe she should have died, do you? No, I don't. I believe God gave us the gift of earthly life and meant us to sustain that gift. Pat, why have you come here? I love John, and I want to go back to him. But it won't work unless I can pretend I think what he did was right and accept his beliefs. Can I go back and pretend? That's what I came here to ask. When I prepared you for confirmation, I taught you God is truth. Well, just now you said, till death us do part. One contradicts the other. There's no magic answer, is there? No, you can, or you can't. Half a dozen times in my life, I've had the chance of being a real priest. Now you offer me another chance, and I don't know what to say to you. But this I do know. You must not go against the truth. That's the supreme law, and the truth for you is in your own heart. That's it, then. Your God doesn't seem to have helped me very much, Mr. Reynolds. The world's a very lonely place without him. I'm lonely without my husband. I suppose the truth is, we all have to find our own answers. Goodbye, Mr. Reynolds. Bye. We'll try traction. I'm against operating in these cases. Come in. Oh. Oh, come in, Jim. I'm just going. Oh, that's all right, Richard. If Mr. Marshall doesn't mind, I don't. I'm going to instruct Mapleton, the solicitor, to ask the magistrates to issue a warrant for the arrest of John Harris. I thought you should know. Arrest? He was cleared at the inquest. Aren't the police satisfied? Well, maybe they are. I'm not. 
I'm taking an action against him for manslaughter. Manslaughter? But this was aired at the inquest. Why do you want to go further? I've got to. Can't leave things as they are. It's too important. Uh, Jim, this is all very public spirited, but it could queer your whole future. Remember, you're a doctor. We're very vulnerable. This might be interpreted as trying to draw a lot of attention to yourself. But I want attention. I want people to know what happened to this child. Harris had the right to say no, and he said it. But that's what's wrong, you see. He shouldn't have the right. No parent should have that responsibility. And that's why I've got to fight him. The medical profession is concerned with healing. You do well to remember that fact, James. So forget the child. She's dead and buried. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't become a doctor to act as an undertaker. James, James! Doctors should stick to doctoring and leave law to lawyers. Do you like a high court judge to take out your appendix? Evening, John. Uh, Beg wondered if you'd like to come over for a bit of supper. Oh, uh, I was just going to put the kettle on for a cup of tea. You're coming with me, lad. Come on. Hello, Harry. That didn't take long. Is he coming? Come in. Come on, lad. Sit yourself down. There we are. He was just going to make himself a cup of tea, Mother. Oh. Uh, no, I, I won't have any tea, thanks. Oh, well, sit down for a minute. I, I want to talk to you. I, I've got to talk to someone. Well, you know what I did. You know the result. Well, I have to know what you think. People have seen it every day for years. What do you think? Teddy is alive, John. If it weren't for you, he'd be dead. Well, a man can only speak for himself. If it had come to mark his life, I'd have done what the doctors told me, whether it was against my religion or not, but... Well, we don't live by the cut and dried rules, you do. No. We go to church for christenings and marriages and... But we don't think all that much about it. For us, it's the simple things. Do unto others as you'd have them do to you. You know, just the simple things. But you see, it's much easier for us than it is for you. So, well, we're not really able to answer your question. We would never be put to the test. Well, uh, I'm glad Teddy's all right. Uh, I won't stay for supper, thank you. You've been very kind. Well, you know what's best, John. But if you feel like company, just come over. Ah, well, you'll always be welcome. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, then. Hey, I wish there was something we could do. He's a good man, you know. Are you sure that we'd think that if he hadn't saved Teddy's life? from the magistrate's court. Dr. Brown got his warrant. What's the charge? Manslaughter. I was at school with John Harris. I've known him all my life. Well, get on with it, Elliot. Don't just stand there. Yes, sir.
Oh, what is it? It's not bad. No, no, John. Well, this is the way it goes, John. John Paul Harris, I hold a warrant for your arrest. That you did on the night of Saturday, the 9th of January, caused the death of Ruth Harris. And it is my duty to warn you that anything you say may be taken down and used in evidence. What? How'd they make that out? Well, I've got you on the Prevention of Cruelty to Children Act. mind up he won't see you or anybody. Maybe, maybe he'll feel different tomorrow. Try and see him early before he comes up in court. Mrs. Harris, could I talk to you for a minute? My name's Hart Jacobs. Yes? I'm afraid this is rather unprofessional, but I want to handle your husband's defense. Who are you? A solicitor. Why do you want to handle my husband's defense? Because I think he's innocent of the charge laid against him. You do? You really do? Would you like to get in my car and talk for a few minutes? Please. I don't understand how they make it out. Well, they've charged your husband on the Prevention of Cruelty to Children Act. Cruelty to children? Well, how can they say a thing like that about John? He was the best and kindest father that ever lived. I'm sure he was. Now, this is how it goes. Tomorrow will be just the preliminary hearing before the magistrates, when he'll be committed for trial. Trial? I shall reserve defence, apply for bail. Have you any ideas who might... Oh, yes. He's not alone in his faith. I know where to go. It won't be an excessive sum. I'm going to see Dr. Brown. I'm going to ask him to withdraw his action. I don't think he'll do that, Mrs. Harris. Well, I must try. <coughs> Dr. Brown, I must speak to you. I was just off to the hospital, Mrs. I Harris. must speak to you. Come in. They've arrested my husband. I know. Yes, of course you know. You did it. I want you to drop the case. I'm sorry. I can't. But it won't do any good. Ruth's gone. And nothing you can do will bring her back. Why do you hate John? I don't hate him. I hate what he did. I believe in living. Not dying. But who's going to live because you put John in prison? Some other child in some other place, I hope. One hanging doesn't stop the next murder. You've said it now, haven't you? He killed Ruth, and you know it. I know I love him. That's the only thing I do know now. And love goes with charity and forgiveness, things you could never understand. What John did was right to him. 
You don't share your husband's convictions, do you, Mrs. Harris? If it gives you any satisfaction to hear it, no, I don't. I know that now. But I understand how real they are to John. He did the same as his father would have done, and his grandfather. They hand down their faith. So I know. Perhaps his father's the real criminal, or his father. They influence their children's minds before they're old enough to make their own decisions. You're very good at making other people look at themselves, Dr. Brown. Well, you've got blindness, too. There is something beyond science. You don't see it, but John doesn't. He has the strength to live by it. Right. Carry on with your case. But I wish I knew what you think you're going to gain by it. I've told you. Another life in another place. Perhaps another mother saved the, the heartbreak you're feeling now. nothing to say. Do you agree with your husband's view? I tell you, she has nothing to say. Now leave her alone. Come on, let her at least make a statement. Have a heart, a couple of words, please. Were you in the hospital when your daughter died? Did you see it? Yes. What happened? Did she die quickly? Was she in pain? Get away. Let us go through. No time now. Oh, yes, oh, This is Mr. Hart Jacobs. He wants to conduct your defense. I, I don't need a defense. I've committed no crime. That may well be, Mr. Harris, but you've been accused of committing one. It's up to us to show the court that the charge is false. Mr. Hart Jacobs wants to help you, John. He thinks you're innocent. Please, John. John. No. I see your point, Mr. Harris. But don't you think that if no defense is put up on your behalf, it'll be taken not as a sign of innocence, but as a proof of guilt? The guilty man, of course, has nothing to say, but the innocent man must say, at least I am not guilty. I'll say that. But then, you see, they'll ask you, why are you not guilty? And that's where I come in. For a man with no legal training to try and answer the questions of the prosecutor and defend himself at the same time is very difficult, believe me. John, you are not the only one to be tried. It's everybody who believes as you do. We are all on trial. Your father's right, Mr. Harris. He and every single member of your faith is in the dock. All right, then. You're up next, Harris. Come along now. This won't take long. I'll have a car round at the back. You can slip out that way. Oh, I've arranged with Superintendent Finlay to give your husband 48 hours protection. Protection? I won't mislead you, Mrs. Harris. He's going to need it for a bit. This is charge number five, John Paul Harris. John Paul Harris. Quickly as possible, please, sir. Father, you're dirty, the word.
can't stay here, Pat. I'll telephone your father. Afternoon. I'm from the Gazette. Could we have this for publication? Get out. Just doing my job? You've got no right to come in here. Give me that. Is nothing sacred to you? And what's so sacred about the kid's picture? You let her die, didn't you? Watch it, lad. Where's that Christian charity of yours? Will you please get out of here? Will you please go? All right. But you better get used to this, though. Your headline's never a national this morning. It's a big story. It's going to get bigger. Come on. I'll take you to your father's. No. Let me stay. Good morning, Mrs. Harris. Good morning. Mr. Harris. Good morning. Please sit down. Mr. Harris? Uh, about the money, Mr. Hart Jacobs. Yes, I want to talk to you about that. Uh, we could sell the house, but I'm afraid it's mortgaged. Well, there's the car. Aye, uh, we could sell that. Uh, won't fetch much, but... You can, of course, apply for legal aid. This will cover my fees and a defending counsel of sorts. Well? Well, I wanted to brief Hilary Pearson, but he costs money. Real money. We couldn't get him under legal aid. No. Not a hope. There is a way, however. Yes? I don't like suggesting it, but there's no doubt that any newspaper would pay handsomely for your story. I don't quite follow you. Well, whichever way the case goes, Mr. Harris, there's a big story here. All the papers, the Sundays especially, will be after the rights. No, I'm not having that. Now, let's look at this from a practical point of view, Mr. Harris. I'll not look at it from any point of view at all. No. I know you're doing your best for us, Mr. Hart Jacobs, but I'll not have it. Everything we are, everything we think is going to be chewed over, I know that. But at least they'll only be guessing. If they buy my name, they can print anything they like and I can't stop them. And I'll not have that. So we'll just have to do without Hillary Pearson. So we... We apply to the court for legal aid, then. Who will we get? A young, ambitious man, Mrs. Harris. But it won't be Pearson. In my view, we need him. I think the prosecution will put up a top-notcher. I don't feel guilty of any crime. As long as the facts are presented fairly, I shall be satisfied. So be it. Your integrity impresses me, Harris. Let's hope it impresses the jury. John Paul Harris, you stand charged upon indictment with manslaughter. And the particulars state that you, on the 9th of January of this year in the county of Durham, unlawfully killed Ruth Rosemary Harris. To that charge, do you plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. John Paul Harris, the names you are about to hear called... What happens now? The All the preliminary business, the jury impaneled and sworn, Opening speech for the prosecution. It won't take long. Sir Humphrey's noted for his brevity. He'll stick to the bare facts. They're so damning, aren't they? And so, members of the jury, you will give the evidence most careful consideration. And you will ignore all rumours. And you will put out of your mind anything that you've read. It is upon the evidence presented before you that you must decide. And remember, whatever Harris's motives, they in no sense mitigate his guilt. And now, with the assistance of my learned friend, I will put the evidence for the Crown before you. First, I shall call Dr. James Brown. Take the testament in your right hand and read the oath aloud. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I give to this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You are Dr. James Brown? I am. 
Ruth Harris was in your care on the night in question. She was. Tell us exactly what you told Harris, Dr. Brown, after you'd examined his child. I told him his daughter was dangerously ill. She needed a blood transfusion. And what was Harris's reply? He said no. And what did you say then? I said that she hadn't a chance unless I gave her what she needed. Red blood cells. Did Harris understand what you were telling him? So when he refused to allow you to give his child the transfusion, he knew he was condemning her to death. What happened then? He came into the ward to see his child. I asked him again to allow me to save her life. What was Harris's answer? He repeated, no. That was his final word? Yes. He'd already signed a declaration accepting full responsibility for his decision. My lord, I now produce the declaration signed by Harris. Is that the declaration? It is. My lord, that will be exhibit one. As I told you in my opening address, we have only two exhibits. The second is Ruth Rosemary Harris's death certificate. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. You are Sister Dora Young? Yes. A state registered nurse on the staff of the East Durham Memorial Hospital? Yes. Were you in charge of the children's ward on the night of Saturday, January the 9th? Yes. Were you there, Sister, when Mr. Harris came to look at his little girl? Yes. Will you describe the scene, please? He came to the foot of the bed and stood there and looked at her. How did the child look? Her eyes were closed and she was very still. White, too. She'd, she'd lost a lot of blood. What happened then? Dr. Brown asked him again. He said there wasn't much time left. He said the child would die. Really, there wasn't any need. Anyone could see she was dying. And what did Mr. Harris say? He said no. Where was he standing? At the foot of the bed. Where he could see the child? Yes, he never moved. What happened then? He left the ward. Wouldn't have been any good him staying. He would just have gone on saying no until the child died. And she did. Who was there when Ruth died? Dr. Brown and me and Mrs. Harris. The child's mother? Yes. Why was she there? Mrs. Harris came back. She'd changed her mind. It was too late then, much too late. One last question, sister. When Mr. Harris stood at the foot of the bed and looked at his child, are you quite sure he knew what Dr. Brown was telling him? Oh, yes, he knew. But he still said no. Thank you, sister. Any questions, Mr. Kent? No, my lord. That is the case for the Crown, my lord. Thank you, Sir Humphrey. Perhaps this is a convenient time to adjourn, Mr. Kent. As your lordship pleases. Members of the jury, we will now adjourn. Please be back in your places by 2.15. Very emotional atmosphere. Yes, Judge. Sir Humphrey certainly played on the nurse to good effect. Unnecessary. The evidence of the doctor and the declaration Harry's side was sufficient. He caused the child's death, so he's guilty of manslaughter. No matter what his motive or state of mind, that's good law. But my experience is, in uh, cases of this sort, juries don't want to know the law. They want to know the man. They've got a string of character witnesses, of course. Quite useless. Only Harris himself can decide the case. Whichever way it goes, there's a weakness here. No single man should be allowed to face the responsibility of the decision that Harris faced. A man can only carry so much. That's why he created the state to shoulder the heavier burden. Mm. There should be a legal curb on parents' powers. Then Harris would never have been placed on the rack like this. I find this a very disturbing case. I could bear it more easily if Harris were a fool. If he loses what sustains him, God help him. I think your lunch will be ready, Judge. Oh. All right, thank you. Go ahead.
they strip the case down to facts. And the bare facts are the last thing we want. Now, we've got to convince the jury that Harris's decision was dictated by his conscience. As for testimony about his character, well, Teddy's father will praise him for saving his son and their few more friends. Are you calling the fellows that went shirty, members of his sect, his, his father? No, no, no more cranks, no. No, to my mind, there's only one thing to do. Chuck them all overboard and put up Harris. It's always a risk to put the prisoner in the box. Harris is already overboard. He's only got one chance. To sink or swim on his own integrity. Tell me what you think. About what? John Harris. His action guilty as hell. His reason, innocent as heaven itself. You know, I wanted Hilary Pearson. I'm glad we got you. Put him up, Kent. Put John Harris in the box. Silence! Mr. Kent. May it please your lordship. Members of the jury, this is, as you must certainly feel, an important case, both from the public and Harris's point of view. And it's a tragic case, whichever way you look at it, because it concerns the death of a little girl, a death that was caused by her father. Now, we don't dispute the fact, and I repeat the fact, that Harris caused the death of his daughter by omission. But that is not the issue. Harris is on trial for the heresy of setting aside medical knowledge for a religious belief. In 1689, there was passed the Toleration Act, which was the beginning of the full rights that man enjoys today. In law, in this country, a man may worship as he pleases. Harris chose a set of beliefs. There's no secret about them. They constitute a general recognized faith practiced by thousands and thousands of people all over the world, and the state allows it. A great deal has been made by the Council for the Crown of the declaration that had a son. But if the law required him to sign it, then I submit it presupposes a right of choice. Members of the jury, I'm not going to weary you with a lot of unnecessary witnesses. If you're to understand why Harris behaved as he did, which constitutes innocence and not guilt, then you must know the man. And that is why you must meet him and hear him and judge the extent and sincerity of his beliefs. I call John Paul Harris, and only John Paul Harris. John Paul Harris, to solemnly, sincerely, and truly declare and affirm that the evidence I shall give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You're John Paul Harris? I am. Was Ruth Rosemary Harris your daughter? Yes. Did you love her? Yes. Did you love her when you refused the blood transfusion? I never stopped loving her. I love her now. Now? Ruth is dead, Mr. Harris. To be with God is not to be dead. Will you do your best to speak up, Mr. Harris? What did you say? I said to be with God is not to be dead. How do you make that up? By the evidence of the Bible and the example of Jesus Christ. How deep is your faith, Mr. Harris? It's what I am. Who taught it you? My father. Who taught him? His father. With respect to my learned friend, Harris's religious convictions are not under dispute. We know the details of his faith. We understand them and their consequences only too well. 
My lord, I'm trying to establish that Mr. Harris's faith constitutes his conscience. May I then remind the court that a man may reasonably and nobly follow the dictates of his conscience. There's no guilt there. Mr. Kent, I don't want to stop you from behaving and speaking the way you decide may be best for the defendant. And if it will assist you, I shall direct the jury that the defendant is perfectly entitled to his own beliefs. But that is, of course, a very different matter from omitting to fulfill the duty laid down by statute which he had towards his tribe. I'm obliged to your lordship. With respect to your lordship, I'm endeavouring to show the jury what Mr. Harris considered his duty. Mr. Harris, what did you consider your paramount duty to Ruth that night at the hospital? To protect her everlasting life. How did your action achieve that? Well, now, tell the jury in your own words, Mr. Harris. We live by the literal word of the Bible. We believe in its prophecies and look forward to the reward of eternal life on a perfect earth if we follow God's law, in which it is written, you shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. And you interpret that to apply to blood transfusion? Yes. In the original Hebrew scriptures, the word eat means to absorb into the body. In transfusion, blood is taken into the body. If you had agreed to a blood transfusion, what do you believe would have happened to your child? By deliberately trying to prolong Ruth's earthly life in that way, we would have sacrificed her chance of resurrection and everlasting life in a perfect world. Well, why do you believe Ruth would have been punished for a decision that was not hers, but yours? Because it is written that the sins of the fathers shall be visited upon the children. On what specific grounds do you base your belief? On the written word. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Harris. I want the jury to understand your motives for the decision you took. Now, will you listen very carefully to what I have to say and answer us carefully? We're dealing with very difficult theological issues, so I'll put my questions as simply as possible. Now, on the night in question, were you guided solely by your religious principles? Yes. Is religion a selfless thing? Religion's a personal thing. I I think it should be selfless. You heard Dr. Brown's evidence? Yes. Is there any single part of it with which you disagree? Did it all happen as he said? Yes. How old was your child? Eight. Was she a happy child? Yes, very. Did you know her well? Ruth, did you know her well? Did she spend much time with you? Yes, we went everywhere together. A devoted family? Very devoted. Was she a religious child? Ruth, was she a religious child? Yes, I think... Think? What do you mean, think? Was she or wasn't she? R Ruth was a good child. You say that your father taught you your faith. He did. Did you teach that same faith to Ruth? Yes. Did she understand? Did she understand what you were teaching her? Ruth, did she understand? Well, how could I know? She was only eight. Oh, but you behaved as if you did know. What was your wife's religion before she married you? Church of England. Church of England. The mother changed her religion. Then why not the daughter? I put it to you, Harris, that Ruth might have grown to womanhood and shed your faith like an outworn skin. By your own admission, she was happy. She enjoyed her temporary life. But you didn't pause to think that that little girl of eight years old might want to cling to this world. You hurried her into the next. No. Not no, Harris. Yes. No, no. In my submission, you didn't take in what was being said to you. You weren't really thinking. You relied on a miracle to save Ruth. And that's the truth. Well, the miracle didn't happen. But you risked her life. You put your personal faith before her welfare. And you let her die. You let Ruth die. <laughs> Mr. Harris, face the jury, please. Do you miss Ruth? Every moment. You miss her, you loved her, yet you willingly gave her up to God. Why? Tell the jury why. He's eternal, everlasting. 
His goodness is infinite. There's nothing comparable on earth. You mean to you, heaven is a very real place? Yes. As real as your own living room? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Harris. My lord, that's the evidence for the defense. What's the matter, Klein? It's hot in there. Oh, courts are always hot. Even in winter, everybody sweats. I'm glad that part of it's over. I couldn't detect much more. You know, you're like all hotheads. Once you see the results of your clamouring, you want to pull out. I'm not sure now if crucifying Harris is the right answer. A bit late for that, isn't it? Anyway, the judge gave the right answer. Hmm? In law, Harris neglected the child, and that's manslaughter. Let's hope Harris didn't affect the jury the way he affected you, or we're sunk. You're very quiet, Brown. Has the real thing disturbed you, too? Oh, no, the real thing for me is still that child's death. And what's on your mind? Harris. He's a sick man. He hasn't slept for nights and that shock in there didn't help him. What shock? He saw himself. You mean he realized it was a fake? No, no, I didn't mean that. Harris believes all right. He believes in God the Father. But he found out something in the dock that he's been trying not to face. What? Jury coming back, Mr. Clyde. Members of the jury, are you agreed upon your verdict? We are. Do you find the prisoner at the bar, John Paul Harris, guilty or not guilty upon this indictment? Not guilty. You find him not guilty? And that is the verdict of you all? It is. He is guilty. <laughs> Let him be released. No, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. He told the truth. I saw myself as Abraham when God tested his love. Told him to sacrifice his son only. God sent an angel to hold back Abraham's knife and I thought he'd do the same for me. I never really believed she'd die. I wasn't thinking about Ruth's afterlife. I was thinking of a miracle to keep her alive. I sacrificed her. I sacrificed Ruth, and I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Where is it, please? Over there, sir. Want to see Harris? Quickly, please. Go on, there. Sit him out the back. Through there. Did God blindly not to take Ruth away from me? I can never redeem what I've done. Your God forgives, doesn't he? You're telling me to pray? Yes. Don't tell me you've had a change of heart. Oh, no. Now, what I did, I'd do all over again. I can't bear to see life wasted. That's why I want to save yours now. You're too late. 
I died in that courtroom. Oh, it's too easy. You've got to go on living. Find your God again, and this time, don't load him with the whole responsibility. You, you could have saved Ruth. I stopped you. Yes, could have saved her. Can save you now. John. Oh, thank God. Come home. Ruth would always stand between us. We must learn to live with that. John. Let him go. If he's going to come back, he must come by himself. <laughs> 